Today we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes that players make before going to Milson West, coming from Milson West Cadre. There's a long list, I could talk about this for hours, but I think one of the biggest issues that I see is um, people not packing their gear and carrying it efficiently. Um, and a lot of this just, you know, it happens to everyone. It's happened to me, it's, I'm sure it's happened to you if you've gone to some of the long form Milsom West, but you overpack or you don't take enough. And, and usually it's, it's the first one. Um, usually people overpack, including me. My first time at my Milsom West experience, I brought a bunch of stuff. And part of that also goes with uh, not being physically prepared to carry all that gear that you need. Um, and you want to talk about that link? Yeah, yeah. So like I, I, first off, going back to carrying too much, my first Milsom West, I had a three day assault pack and then I had my assault, like my actual assault pack clipped onto that. So not only was I carrying too much, but a lot of that weight was like a foot away from my body. So it was just miserable <laughs> to carry. But I feel like because Milsom West requires you to use kit that you don't use every time that you play Airsoft, mm -hmm. people don't actually prepare or they're, they're just not they're not ready to actually carry it. Like if you're not going out and testing your ruck and making sure that it's comfortable and that you can keep up at a moderate pace when there is some incline, that ruck in the first night is going to suck. Oh yeah, that's for sure. And I actually did the, first, the same thing. Uh, I had a three day assault pack and then a smaller assault pack clipped on. And uh, no, I don't think I had brought a sleeping mat. And I remember being very cold that first game. Yeah, that, that's definitely one of those things where, because you don't, you don't use your sleeping mat when you go to the open play or even the mid-level, like, larger airsoft game. So I think a lot of people, you just need to test out what you have to be prepared, because if you go to Milson West with something that is going to keep you warm, keep you alive, and you've never used it before, mm -hmm. you could be in for a very rude awakening when it doesn't do what you're expecting it to. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you can carry your ruck and being prepared to have maybe, I would say a good training point is maybe that 35, 40 pounds. I feel like that's yeah. where most people's stuff ends up and mm -hmm. is going out and, and training with it, making sure that you're comfortable with it and that you have that actual fitness is going to be, be critical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, and I feel like uh, I'm, I'm lucky uh, because my, my normal day job, I'm usually hiking with a 25 pound pack. Um, and that's mostly because I like to carry extras of stuff on the normal, you know, I like to have my extra rain jackets, I like to, like to have, uh, you know, an extra pair of socks if need be and plenty of water for my normal day job of walking around in the wilderness. Um, but I definitely, uh, try and find some time to get some rucks in and yeah, like that, like that 25 to 45 pounds is really good. I know with task force keg, our sort of standard, so to speak is uh, 35 pounds and trying to get like a 15 minute mile. That's, that's pretty good. Like trying to, trying to get that, that's, that's pretty quick. Like even for me, sometimes it's pretty quick, but if you can do that, if you've got a gym, um, you know, Stairmaster, elliptical, bike, anything that gets you moving, even just walking. Um, but definitely try and get some resistance training in with that with uh, additional weight because I would say the, the average weight of equipment that I'm bringing to at some of these games is like if it's an urban AO, probably 70 pounds with plates. That's a lot of weight and that's significant. And usually I'm not always training with 75 pounds, but if you're training at least a little bit with something, you're gonna be a little bit more prepared than you would be if you didn't. So yeah. no, no, I think that's interesting with the weight because one of the neat things about Milson West is that if you wanna go through the process of having an extra respawn, you can have a weighted plate and a ballistic style helmet. Mm -hmm. The plates have to be five pounds each at a minimum. So that's an extra 10 pounds plus an extra two pounds to the helmet. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend going through with that and, and getting that advantage for a first time Milson West player? I would say no, if you've never worn plates before for that long. If uh, you're a prior service and you, you worked a job where you had to wear body armor a lot, then Maybe you should consider it because you're a leg up and you know what to expect, but there's a lot of old vets out there that I know that don't want anything to do with those IOTVs or plate carriers anymore or ballistic helmets. Um, but I think for your first event, you should be trying to enjoy it. And the other thing too, it's, it's okay to make mistakes. Like it's, that's, that's the way you're going to learn how to, for the next event. You know, I'm, I'm always learning and improving my gear and, 
and going back and trying different rucks. I mean, I sort of make it a point to try and use a different rucksack for every game at this point because I've got so many and, uh, and I enjoy using them all. So, and some are better than others. So um, for your first event, I would recommend trying to run a little bit light. But, you know, if you really are adamant about bringing something, then bring it as long as it's tax op compliant and, and yeah. all that jazz. And I feel like a lot of the preparation before the game for Milsim West comes down to what AO you're going to be at. Like if you really, if you group Milsim West very simplistically into two types of AOs, you have your urban and then just kind of like your, your kind of woodsy sort of field. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like that while there may be some considerations, like for Guardian Center, I think yeah. that's a good place to run plates because of how Great. urban it is. It's very flat, so the mm -hmm. ruck isn't bad even if it's a long distance. Yeah. But versus going to like like Balkar coming up, mm -hmm. that is a much tougher AO to convince me yes. to wear plates in. It's a, it's a very physically challenging AO to the point where um, for me, as someone who does a lot of these events, I mean, in the past two years, I think I went to six Milsom West, and that's a lot. For me now, it's, I'm very focused on sustainability, right? Like I've got, I have a torn meniscus, I've slipped three discs in my back. So when I look at, a, at an event like that, like ball car, that's very physically challenge, challenging, I gotta think, well, I gotta be ready for the next one too. So maybe no plates for this one, but anytime an, an urban event rolls around, it's plates, especially if it's something like Guardian Center where there's really no hills. I mean, you've got some stairs, but I'm yeah, obsessed with bad. the Stairmaster, mm -hmm. so <laughs> bring yeah. it, you know? Um, but uh, Volgograd is another one in Tennessee, uh, in Loudoun, that's, that's another challenging one. I, I definitely could see myself running plates at that one, um, but the, the hills are, are really brutal at that one. But uh, what an amazing piece of property. Uh, mm -hmm that Milsom West has, uh, just, a, just a great one. But that's a whole nother yeah, topic. Yeah. Now, now one of the, the big mistakes that I see a lot of people talking about online is when you do have these more urban AOs, like Guardian Center, like GTI, people think, oh, I don't need to be prepared for the elements because I'm gonna sleep inside. Mm -hmm. That's not guaranteed. I, I remember the first night at the last Guardian Center game that I went to, we went into the town the first night, left the town, slept outside and it rained that was not what a lot of people were prepared for at that game they're like well i just need my sleeping bag because i'll have a roof over me and then their sleeping bag got wet on friday night and they had a very uncomfortable saturday night and by saturday we did end up sleeping inside but just because it's an urban facility don't assume that you're not going to sleep in the woods yes. and that you shouldn't be prepared to fight in the woods either because that could very easily happen. Yeah, and I and I think at a at a minimum for a sleep system for a game that isn't like Arctic or freezing conditions, you need to have at a minimum a bivy sack and a whoopee. If you show up with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty happy with that. Um, that being said, uh, if you're someone who's not used to the cold, you might want to consider getting a, a 30 degree bag and a bivy. But please bring a bivy. Um, a poncho is a decent substitute for a bivy, but that being said, if you're outside and it rains and you had the poncho over you and not around your sleeping bag and no sleeping mat, you're probably mm. gonna have a wet sleeping bag and it might not dry for the rest of the event. And USGI bivvies are pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Espe I mean, especially if you don't buy the entire three-piece system, like yes. just the, the waterproof bag, 40 bucks. And like, yeah. the way that I justify the stuff at Milson West that I won't use for regular airsoft games is either one, it's gonna keep me from dying in real life, um, or two, I can just use it to go camping and go touch grass on a regular weekend. Yes. Um, so like, there's a lot of things for Milson West and some other stuff that I wanna talk about in a minute that you can justify that cost for doing normal people activities as well, which makes, which makes the price tag a little bit easier to swallow. But just out of curiosity, with sleep systems, because that's a place where people can really be unprepared, what's mm -hmm. the worst setup you've seen somebody bring? Uh. <laughs> I can't think of anything in particular, but hypothetically, the worst sleep system that you could bring would be like a blanket from home, <laughs> like a fleece blanket from home, and uh, that, that'd just be the worst. Don't do that. Like a comforter? That'd be hilarious. I would love to see that. Please show up to a game with a comforter so I can make fun of you. Um, <laughs> 
but I don't, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen anything horrendous. One of the things that bothers me with people with sleep systems is when they have, and this is totally okay, um, when your sleep system is hanging horribly off your backpack and bouncing around and flopping around and throwing away, throwing around the weight of your rucksack, uh, that's a bad sleep system. I mean, obviously the materials themselves might not be that bad, but you should really think about getting the things on your pack, even if you do have to attach them externally to your rucksack, making sure that they're tight and that they're not flopping around so much and also making sure that they're in a waterproof bag or something. Yeah, that, that, yeah if you don't have some sort of, if your ruck isn't waterproof in and of itself, buy a waterproof cover. They're like 15 bucks on Amazon and that can save everything from getting wet. Yep. Uh, now, now let's, you know, going back to that sleeping bag, you know, cause I can imagine that kid with it like dangling from the bottom. Yeah. Where should that go in your ruck? Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of debate on how you should pack your rucks. And the, the, I feel like the most common, um, tactic when it comes to packing rucks is putting all the light stuff at the bottom and the heavy stuff up top. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, but honestly, this is how I pack my ruck. All of my spare uniforms go on the bottom. Everything that goes on the bottom. In the middle goes my sleep system. On the top goes my wet weather gear. Because if I need, if I'm suddenly, it starts pouring rain and I have to pull all of my stuff out of my ruck to get my rain jacket, that's just dumb. That's just silly. Just, everything else will get wet. Yes, you need, you need your rain jacket uh, in, a, in a location that's quick access. And the second thing you need to get in my opinion, for night one at Milson West, is gonna be your sleep system. Like if you get a chance to sleep on your first night, um, you're gonna want that easy to get. Like I've been at games where, for example, Aerodrome Baba Slava, where we fought for like nine, it felt like nine hours. It was a long time, night one at Baba Slava. And when we finally got a, time, a chance to sleep, I think it was probably, three or four a.m. after I had gotten my patrol base set up and everyone sleeping and on watch, I finally, uh, I took a freaking tarp and attached one corner to a tree. That's it. It was the worst shelter I've ever slept in. <laughs> Threw my ruck under there, pull out a, a wooby uh, jacket, like a smoker's jacket, the old M65 po uh, poncho liners, put that on and just went to sleep. That's like the most basic sleep I've ever had at these games, but I'm very happy that I could easily set all that up and pull everything out very quickly so I could just get a quick three hour power nap in, if it was even that, and then uh, wake up and, and fight the trenches of Aerodrome Babislava again. Yeah, especially on that first night, if you're adjusting from, like if you have a normal nine to five, mm -hmm. and then you're up till three in the morning, getting sleep that night and making sure that you're comfortable, I think is, is really, really important to enjoying Saturday, especially, because mm -hmm. Sunday you can kind of level out you're probably gonna take a nap during the middle of the day. So it can help to kind of regulate and get you used to that Milson West style of sleep in that kind of pattern, I guess you could say. You're not sleeping during your normal hours. So getting it in that first night and being comfortable, I really like as a player because it makes me less grumpy the next day. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of kind of continuing throughout the next day, I feel like a lot of people, because you just don't use it at every Airsoft game, when it comes to food for Milson West, a lot of people, either just aren't prepared or they bring way too much food. Yeah, um, and you know, I'm definitely guilty of that. Uh, the other thing too is people just not showing up with any food is really concerning to me. Um, that's one of the things where I'm like, you should really consider getting some food and bringing a lot of food, or bringing enough food for you and bringing the right food as well. Uh, you know, there is the, the tried and true pocket burger tactic of just shoving cheeseburgers from McDonald's in your in your pocket but let me tell you how those taste after they've been nice and sweaty and mushed in your cargo pocket not very good um, I like what like what uh, blue jean operator does and um, Sean Prozen what he does uh, with you know bagels and peanut butter and that stuff um, that's a really good idea. And I, I'm, I'm really starting to drift more towards bringing food that you can just pull out and eat. You don't need to prepare it. You don't need to cook it. MREs are really good, but pretty high in sodium. And if 
uh, you're someone like me, um, you might get a lot of heartburn from that. Uh, so I've kind of drifted away from that. Uh, MREs and then I use Mountain House for a while and then uh, I spilled boiling water on myself at a game. Lee Howard can talk to you about that at Saratov Resurgency. So now I've moved more away from even Mountain House meals which are delicious and nutritious and awesome like the, re, the uh, dehydrated stuff that you rehydrate with boiling water. Um, you can save weight by not bringing a jet boil. I mean jet boils don't weigh much but without it it's better. But um, the other thing too is water. If you're going to be making mountain house meals or something that you have to rehydrate, you got to bring extra water. You yeah, really it's do. Like, it's like 15 ounces of water on average for the mountain house meals. They, they vary, but you know, that, that's half a, canteen, half a canteen, excuse me, right there just to prepare your meal. Yeah. And you still need to be drinking water throughout mm -hmm. the event. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm totally guilty of that too. Like I went to one game where I had a two liter bladder and two canteens and guess what? I was out of water by the morning of that first one, especially that was the same game where I spilled Mountain House on me. Really more Ooh. wasted water. Bring more water to these games. Uh, I mean, after that, like I really, really started sticking with um, like the rule of you need to bring a, a gallon of water at least to start the game. And I've had people show up and try and go through my check-in lines, um, not really check-in lines, but go through layouts and they don't even have water to start. They've got the stuff to carry them and they show up and they're like, well, where do I fill my water? Uh, you fill it 15 minutes backwards um, at the gas station yeah, that you just passed. You buy the gallons of water <laughs> from 7-Eleven and you just fill everything yes. before you get there's no There's no hose. Yep, and then bring extra. Like maybe if you're going with a group of four people, maybe you should bring a flat of water, like Poland Spring or something, or or just a few gallons of extra water. Because, I mean, check-in process is going to be three hours. You should be hydrating then too. Yeah, um, and I mean like... That's one of those things where, you know, a 30 pack of water, even if you go to the gas station where the price is inflated, it's four bucks. Mm -hmm. I think four bucks and ending up with some water bottles that you bring home with you is, is worth the money. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, now, one of the big things about food that I didn't want to circle back to is I feel like for me personally, food is a big comfort item at Milson West. Oh, yeah. Having warm food is a huge morale booster. Mm -hmm. So personally, I like bringing the jet boil. I think oh, that yeah. the... You know, they're not super heavy, but the, the space that they take up, including the mountain house meals, is worth it to me because it makes the experience more enjoyable and, you know, I can be cold and miserable and then I have yeah. that nice beef sauce lasagna and I am good to go after that or whatever the mountain house meal is. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to have a nice mix of stuff that you can just pull out of your pocket and eat. Like I, I, I bring um, like dehydrated banana chips a lot Ooh. because those I can just shovel in my mouth. They're not horrible for me, but they give me a little bit of energy. They're sweet, so I don't need to bring actual candy, which a lot of people tend to do as a little perk. But having a nice mix of stuff that you can eat while you're walking. And then if you have the opportunity, if you have the 20 minutes to make a mountain house or make an, make an MRE, I, I just personally prefer mountain house to mm -hmm. MREs because sometimes the MRE heater sleeves just don't work. Yep. And there's nothing I hate more than cold MREs. Some people <laughs> can suffer through it. I'm just not built different, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but having that nice mix for food can be really important. Now, we, we did just talk about check-in for a second. If you've never been to a Milson West before, their check-in is different than any other major event promoter and i think it's one of those things that players don't really prepare for just because you've never experienced it mm -hmm. before so i get to the parking lot at my first mill sim west uh, first off one of the big differences is the factions are separated i think that's huge for the game but you pull in to your ao what what do you expect as a new player and how can you make that process as pain-free as possible um well the other thing you you need to do is when you sign up for milson west you need to use a an email address that you actually use so that you can have your orders emailed to you and everything because you know sometimes there might be extra orders and waivers and stuff at the event but what happens if someone forgets and then you've also forgotten like you really should bring that stuff with you you should make sure you have your id you should make sure you have a medical card and all the things that you need so you don't have to mess with that and you should also make sure your gun is chronoed before you show up to the game um that's a that's a big help obviously um if you know where your replica is shooting. Um, yeah, you don't want to be the guy in chrono that learns that they're shooting 15 FPS too hot. And then you got to go over to the trailer for like amped airsoft and buy a brand new gun. Yeah. Because uh, your gun doesn't chrono for this game. And also if you're a, a machine gunner, 
uh, remember to take all that ammo out of your box mag. Um, a lot of the times in the chrono, if you show up and you have ammo in that box mag, you might have to dump it to use the chrono BB. So that's another thing to consider. Um, what else in terms of check-in? Uh, making sure you have those garbage bags. That's one of the things that um, I'll harp on players for is, is not bringing those garbage bags. First off, those garbage bags are useful tools for you. One, to collect your trash. And two, you can put a lot of your spare uniforms in those garbage bags to keep them dry. That's, uh, I've never seen an issue with, with someone doing that. Sure, you need those bags at the end of the game to pick up garbage, but you might not need two. But you should bring two because it's on the tax op, and I'll be looking for them. And they don't, um, and they don't take up a ton of space. Yeah. And nobody, don't be the airsofter that leaves garbage at the field because you're the worst person ever. Yes. But yeah, for, for something that can provide a lot of utility, like I, I bring them, and then, you know, like in that moment, if I have super wet socks, like if mm -hmm. I, my boots get waterlogged, yep. I don't want those to intermingle with my fresh socks. For sure. So they're going in the garbage bag so that that way, you know, it's nice and waterproof and I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that boots are another one of those things that not a lot of players think about but your footwear can can make or break your airsoft experience at yes. any event promoter absolutely um having good boots is critical um it's critical for my job personally as you know an environmental scientist having good boots um but just in life in general like have good footwear treat your feet right uh, i've had lots of foot problems in in the past so i've had to try a lot of different boots uh, definitely bring the pair of boots that is going to be the most well broken in. And there, there's a little bit of debate, should you bring waterproof boots or should you bring regular just boots that dry quickly like uh, desert boots or jungle boots. Um, I can go both ways. Depends, for me it depends on the temperature. If it's, gonna be, if it's gonna be 90 degrees, I'd rather wear a pair of jungle boots. But if it's 30 or 40, then I want waterproof boots. And another thing too, um, we talked about storing uh, certain items in garbage bags, uh, Ziploc bags as well for your dry socks. Um, and then having good socks in addition to those good boots like Darn Tough, Smart Wools, the L.L. Bean Katahdin hiker socks, um, excellent socks. Um, yeah. Something like that. For and, sure. And those, again, are those purchases that, yeah, they might cost a little bit. Like mm -hmm. spending $20 for a pair of Smart Wolves hurts. It, it hurts my soul. Mm -hmm. I've had the same pair of, not Smart Wolves specifically, they're Darn Toughs. I've had them for like five years. They are amazing socks. And I, and I know that we're going on a ramble for something that mm -hmm. most people might laugh at, but it makes a huge difference that if you've never tried them before compared to your Fruit of the Loom cotton socks you're gonna notice a difference. I always wear wool socks when I play airsoft. I have them in different um, weights for the different seasons because you're gonna want a different sock in winter versus summer. Life changer, absolutely slept on if you don't know about it. I think it's one of those things that you should invest more in. And again, they're useful in everyday life. Mm -hmm. They're not just useful at a Milson West event. I'm, I'm at the point now where I am using uh, Merino wool blend, uh, like lighter blend socks for everything, including fitness. Uh, because companies like Darn Tough make thinner merino wool socks that are just the most comfortable socks ever. They don't have any seams um, on those shoe on those boots, and they the socks actually break in and start to mold to your foot shape the more you wear them, which is amazing. Um, they're just fantastic socks. And another thing about Darn Tough wool socks is they have a lifetime warranty. So if you get a hole in those socks and you let them know, they'll just send you money to get more. Um, obviously they're going to ask you some questions, so you're not abusing that. And, uh, but yeah, darn tough. It's, it's worth it. I mean, I don't want to talk about how many pairs of Merino wool socks I have now because, uh, it's concerning. Yeah. I'm poor now. Because of it. <laughs> so I feel like one of the big things that a lot of people aren't prepared for is kind of the pace of Milson West. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to it being a marathon more so than a sprint. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like one of the things you'll see is. Um, people showing up with too many magazines and not enough room for things like snacks and grenades and radios. Um, you really don't need that many mags for Milson West, depending on your role. I mean, if, if you're a, a rifleman, I mean, and you've got 150 round mags, I mean, four to five mags is pretty decent. It's yeah, not bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, or if you have EPM-1s that are 250, oh, yeah. I mean, with just 
three mags, that's 750 BBs. If you have one in the gun, that's a thousand rounds. You're good to go. Like, yeah. And then you have all this room for all the auxiliary stuff, like frags, radios, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. So I, I think that a lot of people I've talked to, like after their first Milsim West, they say like, oh, I wish I got more trigger time or I was expecting more trigger time. But I feel like, I feel like Milsim West is a lot more focused on the other stuff and by having it have that focus mm -hmm. the gunfights are more rewarding at the end of the day yeah absolutely um and back on the magazine topic like if you're a light machine gunner or uh, an automatic rifleman and using something like in an rpk then maybe you do want to have some extra magazines um like if you show up uh as a light machine gunner and you only have one box mag and that goes down then that sucks. I guess you're going to be a medic now, hanging out with yep. me in the back, handing out water bottles. Hopefully you have an M249 that can use uh, standard M4 mags. Yeah, having having that second box mag especially was one of the big things about Milson West. You can't go back to your car. Yes. So you have to be prepared when you step off. So if you're going to be a gunner specifically, make sure you have that second box mag because short of the gearbox destroying itself, that's where most LMGs fail. Mm-hmm. So on that note, with these kind of specialty classes, because Milson West has a lot, you have your, your light machine guns, your medium machine guns, grenadiers, recon rolls as well. Should a first time player go into one of those roles or should they stick with the standard rifleman? I think you should stick with standard rifleman, especially uh, if you, you think you're Jason Bourne and want to be a sniper and you have no experience with radio communications or optics, binoculars, photographs, actual reconnaissance, sending up reports, uh, you probably shouldn't be a sniper. Um, first off, you're, you're going to get like handpicked to be in a sniper position. You need like the commander's authority to essentially act in a sniper role or reconnaissance role for the most part. Um, and you can, anyone can just do reconnaissance. Anyone can reconnoiter an area. Um, but to show up with an M24 and say, oh, I'm going to do this, I wouldn't. Um, if you're someone who's confident with uh, machine gunning at normal games, then maybe you should run a machine gun for your first time. I think you would have a blast. Um, that being said, if, if you're worried about the physical aspect of carrying that machine gun for 40 hours, then maybe you should consider bringing something smaller and lighter. Um, it's, it's very much up to you. Uh, but also remember that we have uh, rules on how many uh, riflemen, machine gunners, and uh, DMRs can, can be in a game. Um, that being said, uh, running a DMR for your first time, that's totally fine. Um, just know that uh, you should have an optic on it and you should, you know, you might want to consider bringing a radio or at least having good communication with someone else with the radio. So just little things like that that you need to look into. and and study up on with the tax op and, and ask those experienced players in the group that you're going with. And if you're going alone, then ask questions on the Milson West General Interest Group. I mean, we love it. Everyone <laughs> loves talking to you. Just know that if you ask a question that's uh, going to be answered by the tax op, you should probably you're, just you're, read yeah. it again. Well, and I, I think that's one of the really unique things about Milson West is that I feel like it's one of those games where you get so much more out of the game by participating in all the stuff before it, by, by joining your faction group on Facebook, by being mm -hmm. engaged in the general interest group. And to some players, that might seem like homework. But I think that like this is the only event where I have felt true unit cohesion, or at least being on the same page with people before step off, versus other a lot of other large scale games where you know, I, I might vaguely know who my squad leader is, but you know, there's a chance they lose their radio and run off like a rando in the first 15 minutes of the game. Yeah. And then we're just kind of throwing ourselves at the meat grinder for a day and a half. So yeah. Milson West is really good with that coordination, which is one of those things that makes the event unique. I think one of the other unique things is because Milson West doesn't stop. You are from the start to the end, you are in the airsoft game, which makes it a great event for people who have night vision but I've also heard from a lot of people who are afraid if they don't have Nodge or they can't afford to rent them, that they're going to be outgunned at night and just not have a good time. And how do you feel about that if you're going to go to a Milson West without Nods? I went to uh, a fair amount of Milson West and when I was a customer without Nods because I was just getting into the hobby and I had, um, I, you know, I didn't really have the money or the assets to spend 
on night vision. So uh, bring a good white light. Um, absolutely, and and also don't be afraid of the dark. And it is it is more difficult, but it's also very fun. It's also very fun to be in a situation where you don't have much and you're fighting against people who have everything. Uh, it's very fun. It's very rewarding, especially um, when you get those shots out and you get to white light somebody with night vision and and you do a great job. And also, uh, as someone who's uh, played against people without nods and all and and seeing entire militia platoons have white lights and them using them at night, that's very effective. Like there's there's some nights when night vision isn't even going to work for you. Like if you're in a in a completely old story forest with so much vegetation, and even if it's a full moon, you might not be getting that ambient light through that tree coverage. So once again, night vision has been rendered almost useless. Um, so white lights are definitely something that you should consider. Um, I would, I would actually take a white light over an IR laser. It's it's just yeah. more useful. And and at a guardian center, there's street lights. Like mm -hmm. it's so bright that you really, I I didn't feel the need for it for a lot of mm -hmm. Saturday when we were more in the city. Friday when we were kind of skirting around it. Yeah, it was helpful, but I I could have lived without it. Yep. So I, I think that if you don't have night vision and you're concerned that you're going to get stomped. I, I would not be afraid of that, especially because there's more than likely there can be somebody in your squad who does have it, and then they can direct you where to fire, and yep. you're gonna have that communication in that teamwork. So if you're afraid of going there without NVGs because you don't wanna drop two plus grand, don't worry, or you can rent from a place like Amped yeah. Airsoft that goes to most Milson West games, yep. and for pretty affordably, you can get night vision and have a really cool time and look up at the stars, uh, which is half of what I used night vision for at Milson West was goofing off with it. Yeah. But overall, I think that if you're going to a Milson West game, it's definitely a different breed of airsoft than, mm -hmm. than the other event promoters that are out there. But that's what makes the game rewarding and unique. And that's why Milson West, I would say, has the most loyal customer base out of any game in North America. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a unique experience of a blend of airsoft, military simulation, um, a social experiment, and also camping. And uh, as many of the viewers know, like camping is my primary hobby. That's why I do this. That's why um, Milsom West and other events like Survive Omega are really the, those are the two events in, uh, that I prioritize is because I get to camp. Um, that being said, go out there, try everything, make mistakes. Um, Try not to make mistakes that cost you valuable minutes of preparation at the game. Make sure you have all those red list items when you show up to a game. Make sure you're bringing proper stuff, your Gore-Tex jackets, your extra socks, your rain pants. Uh, a lot of people skimp out on rain pants, random thought, but uh, rain pants are definitely helpful to have. Uh, you don't necessarily need them, but you really should bring them. <laughs> When you need them, you need them very badly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't don't skip out on on rain gear. Even if you're even if the weather app on your phone is like it's going to be beautiful, mm -hmm. could rain. And I, I would just rather you know for how somewhat packable it is. And again, you know, it's not a disposable item. If you buy it once, you're going to have it for at least a couple of years unless you do something dumb with it. Mm -hmm. It's worth it's worth the money and it's worth the little bit of weight to have that protection for for when it does rain. Mm -hmm. For sure. So yeah, those are just some of the biggest mistakes that new players make when they're going to Milson West. And hopefully today's video was helpful for you if you're looking to go to Milson West, or maybe you've already been and are brushing up on your skills. But if you wanna watch more Airsoft content, here is another helpful guide to going to Milson events, or you can click the video right here that YouTube thinks that you should watch. But uh, my name is Lane for the BB Warrior, and we've got Corey from Gun Gamers and Milson West here. Thank you all so much for watching.